Hey, I read nine books in June and we're gonna have a look at them. So because June is Pride Month, I was only reading queer books this month and I did make it through nine of them and I think that's pretty good for me. That's probably the most I've ever read in a month. I did read 10 books in January, but two of those were Goosebumps books and the others weren't that long. A couple of these were over 400 pages, which isn't a lot, but it's also a lot. So to start off with, I read These Violent Delights this book tricked me on several levels, and I'm still trying to unpack it all. I knew it was going to be dark, but it was a very different kind of dark to what I was expecting. It's slow-paced, especially the first 70 pages, but then it picks up and takes a new step every 30-ish pages. You go from not much is going on to, okay, that was different, something's happening here, to, oh my god, what am I reading? All within the first 130 pages. Um, I'm someone who really struggles with slow-paced books, but I'm quite glad that I pushed through this one. It follows two teen boys in the early 1970s. I have a lot of feelings about this book, but many of those things I couldn't begin to put words to. The ending, I thought, was really clever. So clever that I almost missed it, actually. I finished the book and frowned myself as I thought, what? just happened? What was that about? I don't get it. I sat for a moment before getting up to continue to exist, and then suddenly, a few minutes later, oh. Oh, I get it. I get it. It was the kind of realization that stuck with me and followed me for the rest of the day, sneaking its way into my thoughts whenever it found the space to do so. This book was far from what I had expected it to be. It was very, very different to what I usually enjoy, but the impression that it had on my soul is indescribable. Next, I read Out by Miles McKenna. Uh, this is a non-fiction book about queer identity and self-expression. It is filled to the brim with queer joy and pride and encouragement to be yourself and do what's best for you. It's incredibly colourful and very easy to read, um, with lots of pictures and quotes and fact boxes and funky fonts in a scrapbook style format. Actually, I really, really enjoyed reading this book and just every page, every page is so different. I would highly recommend it if you're looking for something simple and lighthearted and encouraging and educational, especially if you are LGBTQIA plus yourself or questioning your identity or looking for a better way to support, you know, loved ones or people you know in your life. Or even if you just need some encouragement to be yourself and reassurance that you're not alone. Next up we have The Boy from the Mish. I was given this book for Friendmas in January and I finally read it in its entirety in one day this month. It was a tricky start as I was adjusting to reading something written in the present tense, though it took me a while to figure out what the issue was, but it was overall a pretty easy read. This is a YA book with themes more suited to older teens that reads like middle grade. It touches on a range of subjects and themes, including racism, internal homophobia, external homophobia, culture, relationships, family, friends, and sexual slash romantic, and identity. It also touches on a cultural background and the division between groups of people and the way these things affect the community and different generations. One thing I really liked about this book in particular was the way the writing style changes towards the end of the book. There's a change in our character and the way he views things, and with this comes an adjustment to the way things are written. The writing seems to become lighter, more descriptive, and more open. And I thought that was just really beautiful. And we have Tears in the Water by Margarita Schaller. Uh, this book is incredibly cute and very wholesome. It's a tea for tea with multiple plots and themes, a decent range of characters, and of course, a gender crisis. Throughout the book, there were multiple different coming out scenes, all with a detailed but not overcomplicated explanation of the identities. I also believe Margarita's thoughts on this book included something along the lines of how many types of queer rep with stated labels can I fit into a single novel? And they absolutely smashed it. I think I counted eight, 
Um, and, but it was done in a really casual way where it didn't feel forced or crammed in. It was natural and it was really lovely to see, especially with the variety of identities. The main character is also neurodivergent, which though not stated on page is really validating to see. This is shown through a lot of smaller hints as well as the way Alex's anxiety presents itself. The way this book shows and explains having a gender crisis and being trans felt so real and relatable. I've also done a full review of Tears in the Water on my blog, which I will link in the description below. Song of Achilles. I only picked this up a couple of months ago and only because it's so popular and of course I was curious. It's a book I might have avoided because of the history mythology stuff, but someone pushed me to read it. And I wasn't expecting to be into this book, but I ended up fixating on it quite heavily for the days I was reading it. Part of this fixation may have been due to someone giving me a massive spoiler just hours before I was due to start the book, and I then felt pressured to rush and catch up to that part so it would no longer be a spoiler, which did make it a little bit stressful at times. Um, but aside from that, I really enjoyed it. I'm not mad about the spoiler, though, and I'm actually kind of shocked it wasn't spoiled for me sooner with how much people talk about it. I didn't expect this to be my thing, but this book is beautifully written. Funnily enough, the parts I should have cried at didn't really make me cry, because the spoiler maybe we'll never know. Light tears, but nothing more. But the last few pages had me bawling, crying so hard I could feel it. But I also had to go back and reread the last page and a half because my eyes had been so full I could barely read the words. We have By Your Side, which is a queer platonic short story. It's very cute, very sweet, very wholesome. I loved how the main characters interacted with each other and the backstory of their friendships. Just beautiful. If We Were Villains. I'm okay, the book didn't break me. I'm okay, the book didn't break me. I'm okay, the book didn't. If We Were Villains follows a group of acting students at a school that focuses on the arts. The group is in their fourth year of dedicating every waking moment to Shakespeare. This group of students are so immersed in their studies and their love for Shakespeare that they will converse in quotes from the plays or include references mid-conversation and in their thoughts. While it would likely to help to have a knowledge of the plays, I don't think it's necessary. I'm only familiar with a few and still really enjoyed this book. The way the plays they study align with the plots and themes and the way they blur and almost meld in places was so brilliantly done and quite clever. The overall writing was beautiful, not always poetic but with spurts and occasional lines. The characters, their identities, and the characters they play were so perfectly sculpted in a way that pushed the plot forward and gave it exactly what it needed to be what it was. This book was beautiful, shocking, heartbreaking, and a bit scary at times. The uncertainty and the hints throughout kept me holding onto the pages of the book and on the edge of my seat. On top of everything else, the ending may just have ripped a new hole in my heart. Golden Pineapple Diaries. Have you ever read a short story collection where all the stories reference other stories in the collection and are actually related in a way that makes it not really a short story collection but more like a Frankenstein novel? Because that is essentially what this is. A haunted piano, drag queen witches, vampires, a teenage serial killer, and more. While most of these can be read as standalone short stories, they do work best when read in order, as they take place on a timeline and may refer to events from the previous stories. I really struggle with reading short story collections and short stories in general, but this was a pretty easy read, um, especially once I realised they were all connected. We know by now I am a sucker for connections between an author's different works, especially when it's done in a way that makes it clever or important. This works as a prequel to a series the author is working on about vampires called The Unfortunates. There's also a reference to another one of their novels, Atomic Love. And finally, we have Red, White, and Royal Blue. This was recommended to me by a friend who described it as an adult novel, but it reads like YA, and I definitely agree with that statement. The banter between the main characters hooked me quite early on. This book is cute almost annoyingly cute, like, 
constant smile glued to my face while reading it. Level cute. I did get worried for a while where it seemed to abandon the idea of characters having any sense of personality or even being people, but it did come back. The plot returned abruptly and with full force. It's definitely the kind of book to read if you want to know exactly where it's going before it gets there. Nothing is mystery, everything is either heavily hinted or outright said long before reaching that point in the book. I did forget a couple of times that these characters are in their early 20s and not teenagers. Maybe because of the way the book is written, maybe because they're so closely involved with their family and so controlled by them. One thing that bugged me in this book, possibly even more than the chunk where the characters forgot to be people, was in the emails when Henry, who is supposed to be English, used the American spelling of a word. I struggled with some parts of it, being unaware this book would contain that sort of content. I was told it was a wholesome book, I was not warned about the gross bits, but overall it was a pretty good read. Some of the writing was beautiful, just having to stop and reread the quote because it's so perfect and that definitely made it worth it. So yeah, that is what I read in June. Um, have you read any of these? Did you like them? What did you get up to reading in June? And um, did you have like a set thing? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Happy reading till then. Stay awesome.